A few weeks ago on Ask Chris and I addressed the question, should cisgender men have a say in abortion? To which a lot of guys commenting said, yeah, sure, have your abortions as long as guys can have rights to financial abortions. I don't know why I put just financial in quotes. In a nutshell, a financial abortion refers to this idea of being able to give up all parental and financial responsibilities associated with raising a biological child. In other words, if you want to have the baby, go ahead, but I will have nothing, not a penny or moment of time to do with that. And the Ask Kristen commenters who express this desire for an opting out of fatherhood or just paternity in general usually placed it in straight relationship scenarios such as a guy telling his girlfriend that he never ever wanted to be a dad and then she gets pregnant and then she decides to have the child and then all of a sudden he's on the hook for child support and being a father that he never ever wanted to be. And then there are a few guys who said, and what about women who might poke holes in condoms or lie about being on birth control, thus tricking men into becoming fathers again that they never ever wanted to be. Next I want to take a moment and lay a little bit of statistical groundwork when it comes to to child support and single parenting in the US. In the United States, around 23 million kids live in single parent homes. And of those single parent homes, around 82% of those are headed by a custodial mom. And of those custodial single moms, only 36% have never been married. So in a majority of child support cases, these kids are products of marriage and then divorce, not women secretly having babies without men being involved. At least in 2011, only 63% of child support owed was actually paid, which usually amounts to 17% of a parent's income. It's interesting to compare that then to the annual overall cost of raising a kid in 2014, which comes up to just under $14,000. Unfortunately, there is a statistical grain of truth to this background financial abortion panic of what's referred to as reproductive coercion. Someone getting pregnant without one or the other person's consent. According to the 2010 National Intimate Partner and Sexual Violence Survey, 8.7% of men in the United States reported ever having, quote, an intimate partner who tried to get pregnant when they did not want to or tried to stop them from using birth control. At the same time, approximately 8.6% of women in the United States similarly reported having an intimate partner who tried to get them pregnant when they did not want to or refused to use a condom. Which leads to why financial abortions will probably never be codified into law. In 2007, the Sixth Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals dismissed a case involving a financial abortion, specifically a man who did not want to be legally obligated to pay child support under Michigan state law for a child that he had previously informed a girlfriend that he never wanted because he said, hey lady, I never want to be a dad. In its decision to dismiss that case, the court said, Dubay's claim that a man's right to disclaim fatherhood would be analogous to a woman's right to abortion rests upon a false analogy. In the case of a father seeking to opt out of fatherhood and thereby avoid child support obligations, the child is already in existence and the state therefore has an important interest in providing for his or her support. There's something called the UN Convention on the Child, which explicitly states that child support, both financial and emotional, and even just providing basic things like shelter and food, are universal rights for children. 